But at the same time as we see such encouraging and pleasing statistics, there are some matters to address. I remember last year in this conference, Dr. Chris Mark said that there had been no fatal accidents in the pillar recovery in the United States for since 2007. That made me, as a mining engineer, that made me pleased. But it also somehow worried me. Would that be a cause for complacency? If that is true, which we all, we all know, Chris Mark, the greatest man in the world, he, 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 he said truth, of course. But according to the statistics, then can we deduce, as statistical inference theory suggests, can we deduce that there would be no risk in going on the ground and try to do pillar recovery? Would there be would the risk be zero? That's how how it sounds. We can go a little further, either increase the length of time and go to hundred years before until now, instead of five or six or seven years, or enlarge the geographical position and say the whole world. Then we get the true Yes, in the past six years, there hasn't been any. But can we expect to have none in the next 20 years? Potential hazard. Mining has a potential hazard in here. Still underground mining has one of the highest fatal injuries rates, five times the national average in the US. And amongst these fatal injuries, historically, roof and rib falls have been the greatest. They remain the greatest safety problem. Between 1999 and 2008, 40% of underground fatalities were attributed to roof and rib and face or ground control. The use of power support or sophisticated rock bolts that we had a lot about yesterday by speakers have contributed a lot to advance safety, the advanced technology has been the real cause of improved safety. But we all know that. When failures occur in ground control, roof falls or rip falls, they usually result in severe consequences. Types of hazards in ground control, all these. Almost every type of hazard if you think broadly enough. Also stress, which causes psychosomatic diseases. Therefore, management, managing the, these risks requires a management regime that includes strict adherence to operational codes of practice, and an enshrined culture for safety. These are the two main requirements in order to manage risks, of which we have a lot in ground control. Accident reports show that major contributing factors, this is important, that the con major contributing factor in most rock fall accidents 
is the failure to manage known risks. That really means that we know the risks, but we don't manage them properly. This is the characteristic of ground control or rock falls, that we know the risks, but we do not manage them properly. OSAS 18001 is an international occupational health and safety management standard, which I suggest can be used or should be used. It has been developed by, developed to be compatible with ISO 9001 and ISO 14001, the quality and environment standards. It facilitates the integration of quality, environmental, and safety management system. It complies with applicable legal requirements. As I said, it has been used in other industries, and we can easily use it in ground control. A management system is a set of interrelated elements to be used to establish objectives and a policy to achieve those objectives. We want to establish a management system, therefore, to have a robust system in the mind so that the behavior is determined by the people and therefore safety is improved. Well, since my time looks as if it's almost up, I am not going to go into the details of the system, it's all in the paper, but we will just go very quickly. The OSAS standard is based on the methodology known as Plan, Do, Check, Act. Establish standards, implement, measure progress, review against objectives. It's a very systematic approach. And if we do that, then we can use it. All these are the same. If we, if we do that, we can rest assured that progress will automatically result. The elements, structure, Objective, scope, objective, and our goal, as always, in health and safety, in mines, is zero accidents. Those distinguished gentlemen in here who are as old as I am would remember that uh, when we, when we talked about zero accident potential in mining some 30, 40 years ago. Perhaps none of us believed it, but we are now we believe that the, the potential, the zero accident potential really exists because the statistics show that in many cases, accident, the number of accidents have really gone down drastically. The objectives have to be specific, measurable, achievable, reasonable, time-bound, smart, and many other things that I would be glad to talk to you about during the break or any other time. Mines are complex workplaces and the range of hazards and potential hazards are extensive. 
mines do not have to be long or ottoman pillar. They can be some little caving as it is in here. Risk management, which is the major part of this standard, and it has been the, the standard system shows that can be done quite easily, much more easily than sounds. Efficiency of risk control methods. I'll finish soon. Very soon. The most efficient way to solve a safety problem is to eliminate the hazard. As we did with the creation of and the evolution of the power supports, for example. The hazard of roof fall was simply eliminated. Substitute the hazard with something less severe redesign, separate, or administrate, or the least that we can do is to wear protective clothing. If we cannot do anything else to the hazard, we can do that. Again, safety issues related to ground control accidents, typical worksheet. As I said, I can give you this PowerPoint. He made it to you, or I can talk to you about it. And uh, being caught between support and AFC, one, falling roof rock during pillar recovery, and injury caused by rotating rock wall. These are the main ones, plus these others. I'll go straight to the conclusions. All the elements of the standard system, some examples have been given here to demonstrate the ease of use and the impressive results that can be achieved. So let us conclude by giving a few keynotes. Safety and health management systems can greatly reduce the number and severity of accidents. Managers and employees can work together to identify hazards related to ground control, take a proactive approach, which we did not get to, was explained. And the benefits, fewer lost work days, lower accident compensation costs, higher morale for the workforce, and hence, as a result of all these, improved productivity for the mind. Thank you very much indeed.